Thanks for logging on to Wayne.com for the Week 9 final regular season edition of Inside the Zone. Tom Davis of the News Sentinel, the sports editor, joining us as always to talk prep football. And Tom, I must admit, I missed this past Friday. Uh, yeah. Good friend of mine was getting married. We had the rehearsal dinner all this weekend. I flipped on my phone Saturday morning to check emails. What the heck happened this past Friday, because none of the scores made sense to me. Well, it's 2013. That's what kind of year it's been. I mean, every single week we sit there and say, can you believe that happened? And sure enough, uh, another upset happened. And, and you know, each week we keep seeing Norwell win. They've won three games in a row now. And at some point we need to stop saying, I can't believe Norwell won. Maybe they've just fixed some things and they're actually pretty good. But, yeah. Uh, East Noble just throttling unbeaten New Haven, uh, Homestead going down. I mean, it's just, it's crazy what's going on. I want to start with the Dwenger Snyder game because we, we figured that would probably be a pretty close game. It's been a battle the last few years, pretty much throughout the history of the programs. Uh, but man, did that victory by Snyder muddle up the SAC. There are so well, many really. scenarios. Well, to a, to a degree, because to a degree. we could have conceivably four teams finish Four and two, or five and two in conference when it's all said and done. You could, and I hesitate to guarantee anything the way this year has gone, but I feel very, very good that Northside is going to be focused all week. They're going to do what they need to do against Northrop. They'll beat them easily. They'll win the title. So kudos to the Redskins. Even though Ryan Hall said a few weeks ago after uh, the Snyder game, they're not really focused on the SAC. They're focused on winning a sectional, and I get that, but it has to be very, very special for those kids to get their pictures put up on a wall and, and Northside and, and be called SAC champions. Great moment for this program under Ryan Hall. He's done a magnificent job. But this, I mean, it could get crazy. We, we never yeah. know what's going to happen on Friday night. Northrop, I remember in, I believe it was week two when they had that win against Lures, which isn't quite as shiny and new as it was uh, back then, but you never know what's going to happen. they got That's some true. tall receivers, and uh, Ryan Hall's got a game plan against them. And he's coaching 16-, 17-, 18-year-olds right. who lose focus, who think they've already got the title wrapped up. And so we see this every single week. Kids lose focus, and next thing you know, we got an upset. Well, we thought New Haven, uh, because of some stumbles by East Noble, including, as you mentioned, a loss to Norwell earlier in the season, that uh, New Haven was going to wrap it all up in the NHC this past Friday. That did not happen right. in a big way. We're talking a 30-6 to loss against a good East Noble team. Uh, what do you gain from that, and what do you see? Because on the other side of the NHC, you see Homestead falling to Norwell by two at 28-26. Well, with the East Noble New Haven game, the East Noble offensive line was dominant all night. They really ran the clock, or they ran the ball well, they, and they passed the ball well too, actually. Luke Amstead said that Bryce Wolf had his best game of the season the other night, but they had very long, sustained drives behind that offensive line, and so they ate up a lot of clock, which kept that explosive New Haven and that powerful New Haven offense standing over on the sidelines. Uh, and then conversely, the Bulldogs' defense had given up less than 15 points all year, gave up double that against East Noble. We have seen East Noble in Kendallville can beat anybody. Mm. Indianapolis Colts, Patriots, <laughs> Notre Dame, whoever you want to throw out. They are capable of beating anybody in Kendallville. And uh, sure, sure enough, they played very well in all facets of the game the other night. Brandon Mabel returned after a few weeks uh, not of not playing. Had a big night, 229 yards and two touchdowns. So, uh, you know, when he's playing and the team's focused and the offensive line's dominant like they are, hey, East Noble's tough to beat. NECC, very much a title-type game last week. In fact, Fairfield clinched a share of the title, at least, uh, with a victory to finish 7-1 in conference play. They'll get Culver this week. Uh, for Busco, they were undefeated coming in, thinking they could lock up a championship. It didn't happen, and it didn't happen in a big way. 35 to 14 was the final Fairfield winner. Now Busco and Lakeland square off with the winner of that game, sharing a conference championship with Fairfield. In your eyes, what was the biggest difference in, in Busco territory on Friday night? Well, Busco couldn't stop the run. I mean, Fairfield had two guys combined for 284, 284 yards rushing. And uh, how about this? Busco had given up, has given up 64 points all season long. They gave up 35 of those 64 in one night to Fairfield. And Fairfield has Busco's number to a degree. Last time they had an NECC loss for Busco, it was to Fairfield in 2010. So unless Cherubusco can shore up that run defense, now maybe last Friday was an anomaly, 
But, uh, you know, they're going to have to uh, shore up that run defense if they want to advance far in the tournament. And I know all the people out there, they think that this team has the capability, especially with Lures being out of their sectional now, um, although they kind of wish Lures was in their sectional this year. Um, they, they have high hopes for a deep turning run, but if you're going to give up 300, 300 yards rushing uh, to an opponent, you're going to be in deep trouble because your offense is never going to be on the field um, doing this. What, what Fairfield did to Busco is what Busco had planned to do to Fairfield. Yeah, just grind it out, run it out, keep the clock on your side, and move the yeah. football. Um, it's what Paul Sadie has, uh, Sade has been able to do all season long in his first season. Uh, we